Hello everyone, my name is the Dom Fanatic, and this season I've been invited to play in the Pokemon Premier League Season 3. Something I actually founded all the way back in 2014, 10 years ago, can you believe it's still going on? Now for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jack, and I created the PPL way back when, and actually gave the reins to other Jack uh, to revive this last year. Look at us now, we're still competing in it, and I'm loving every second. Now, the video is very last minute, well actually it's two days late, as I've just come back from my honeymoon and getting married to my wife. Um, so my good friend Ellie, uh, if you don't know Ellie, uh, she is the coach of the Shanghai Dragons, and also a great content creator, so please check her out below. Uh, she kindly offered to write the script for me, um, and she's put, and I quote, so there may be a few shenanigans afoot, who knows. Anyway, introductions out of the way, let's get into what I decided to draft for this season of the Pokemon Premier League and cover a few of the basic rules. So the draft was randomised in a snake format between 20 coaches. Sadly for me, I was placed 18th out of those 20, so very much at the end. Each coach has to draft between 10 and 12 Pokemon with a budget of 120 points. A coach doesn't have to spend their full budget and can end their draft after 10 picks. You can only draft a maximum of 1 S tier, 1 A tier, 2 B tiers, and 2 E tiers, as well as a minimum of 2 D tiers. But you can draft any amount of C tiers within your budgets. With regards to, 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 this is be mouthful, to terrestrialization, teams will have 27 points to spend on Terra Captains. Captaining a Pokemon costs the price listed on the Terra tier list. They're trying to get this trip up. A Terra Captain will have access to the amount of Terra crystals listed, and they can be any type and do not have to be Stab. Teams must assign two to four Terra Captains and must stay within the 27 point budget. Most importantly, you can only Terra Captain Pokemon from the Terra tier list. This is to avoid incredibly broken Pokemon, such as Iron Valiant, also getting furtherly broken with Terra Typing. If you want to see the tier lists for both the draft and the terrestrialization, there is a fan document in the description below. Anyway, let's get into my draft. As I said, I was 18th out of 20 coaches in the draft order, which meant a lot of fun things that I wanted to try and use got, had got taken already, which is really annoying, but it is what it is. For my first pick, I settled on one of the longest standing competitive Pokemon there has been, and that is Latios. It's always been good at what it does, and that's wall breaking. With Generation 9, uh, it got a buffed version of Luster Purge with a 50% chance of a special defense drop. And with Soul Dew now being allowed on this thing, it also kind of gives me a pseudo life orb on Draco Meteor and Luster Purge, Dragon Pulse, Psychic, Psyshock, whatever it may be. All without the repercussion of health uh, being lost each turn. Aside from that, Latios has a lot of spam ability. Um, meaning that spec sets are really threatening. Also, if I don't want to run Soldier one week. With base 110 speed, it outspeeds a lot of things outside of Scarfers and gets access to agility should I want to abuse a weakness policy set. It also gets really good coverage to hit steel types, bulky waters, and now gained access to flip turn this generation, making it our first good choice Scarf option and a potential revenge killer on the team. I will also add on to Ellie's notes here, Keep count of how many Pokemon I draft with either Flip Turn or U-Turn or other momentum based moves. To pair with our special wall breaker, I picked up Cinderace. I've always wanted to try Cinderace ever since it was released in Sword and Shield. I'm really excited to use this thing, especially as it pairs with Latios so nicely. It's another Pokemon that has a spammable move from Pyro Ball, but it gives me priority with Sucker Punch as well. This Pokemon tends to lure in bulky waters, but thanks to Libero and U-Turn, we can deal nice chip damage whilst also keeping momentum. I've always thought that Court Change was a really interesting move, as a kind of pseudo-hazard removal, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of shenanigans I can pull off with it. Hopefully I can yoink myself some dual screens, or just deter my opponents clicking hazards in general. If I need to, Cinderace can also act as a stall breaker, utilising other moves it gets, such as Taunt and Super Fang. With my first two picks being speed wall breakers, I decided it's time for some bulk. My third pick was Blastoise, and while it's mainly going to be a defensive staple for me, there are definitely some weeks where Smashtoise is going to make an appearance. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone call it Smashtoise earlier, I'm going to be honest with you. Not only does Blastoise provide another form of hazard control for me, uh, it's gotten more momentum with the likes of Flip Turn. 
Admittedly, Blastoise's main role is probably going to be as a bulky pivot on the team, but like I mentioned before, it can definitely run up either a Shell Smash set or Iron Defense and Body Press. I've used it in a previous league and I had great success with it, um, and I'm really looking forward to using it again, especially after seeing Mounte use it to such an effect last season. You bet I'm going to bring Flail one week. So far the team is really lacking hazards, so what better Pokemon to pick than Gliscor? With this pick I've got myself Stealth Rocks, Spikes, Toxic Spikes and Knockoff, uh, which is going to be really nice as none of my Pokemon have those moves yet. Knockoff is also really nice on my Hazards mod considering I can get rid of Heavy Duty Boots which means my Hazards will become more effective. Gliscor is primarily going to be a defensive piece of my team, but it can act as a stall breaker using moves like Taunt and it is deceptively fast at 95 base speed, giving me a decent choice scarfer or setup sweeper if I want to catch people off guard. I feel like Blastoise and Gliscor synergize quite well defensively, as Gliscor can deal with electro types, and Blastoise uh, will deal with the ice types that Gliscor would just fall over to. With both of them having momentum moves as well, they're going to be a very annoying core to deal with. Now it's getting to the point in the draft where fairy types are starting to get picked, so for this reason I decided to get myself a Tinkerton, something that fits the team perfectly and is something I've wanted to try previously. With Steel and Fairy being types I didn't have, the Twink fills a nice couple of roles for me. First off, we don't lose Dragon Spam, we resist it to stupid levels now with Tinkerton. Speaking of Spam, Gigaton Hammer is one of the best moves this generation with no downside other than you can't use it two turns in a row. That doesn't matter because Tinkerton has an absolute plethora of moves that it can use. And again, I'm going to quote Ellie here because she has put 160 base power, go, brr. This thing's utility move pool is actually insane and can provide me with priority, hazards, status, and disruption in, I can't speak, disruption all in one set. Set up spam is one of the more powerful playstyles and sort of common playstyles this season, uh, sorry, generation, and Tinkerton does a real good job of shutting down threats with Encore, with Taunt, and with Screens. It also has access to T-Wave, and as Ellie has noted in here, I am a yellow magic enjoyer. I love T-Wave, apparently. It's because I hacked out of a game once with it. Um, but yeah, I've already mentioned the utility on this thing is ridiculous. Dual Screens and Steel Beam, if I want to kind of free up myself for a free switch into one of my more offensive setup mons. Talking of offensive setup mons, my next pick was going to be a Terra Captain. And what Ellie's put here is it's going to be one of the more budget picks. However, when you start to look at this next Pokemon, I wouldn't really describe it as budget. Um, I picked up one of the coolest regional forms of all time in Galarian Moltres. I noticed I didn't really have anything for ghost types, so I wanted something that was able to check things like Gengar and Serilege, which both got drafted and ended up in my side of the division. Uh, not only does it give me a switch into Shadow Ball, which is a very common move among a lot of Pokemon this generation, um, it also is a Pokemon that excels in cleaning up games, sort of late game. Um, and I've already mentioned I've got Wall Breakers in Latios and Cinderace, I've got Hazards and Pivots in Blastoise and Bliscor. Um, that should allow me to chip my opponents down to the point where I can get a combination of Berserk, Nasty Plot and Agility and look to clean a game of Moltres. With Latios and Cinderace on the team, Moltres should finish up with a lot of games. I did consider making this my Terra Captain as Terra Poison, as it was allowed, but it would have taken up a large chunk of my Terra budget. And seeing how many options there were left on the board, I decided not to make this my Terra Captain. However, throughout the season, that could change. So we've got my solid end game cleaner. I'm looking at the board for other good Choice Scarf users, and my eyes land on Silly. With powerful stab, close combats, access to U-turn and knockoff, King Julian here fits the bill pretty nicely. This low tier fighting type gets a surprising amount of coverage with Gunk Shot to hit fairies, Knock Off for ghosts, and Rock Slide for any flying types. Persimmon is also one of the bajillion Pokemon that got Trailblaze this gen, so I could even run a bulk up variant while still being speedy. It also gets Upper Hand, which is a really underutilized move, and that can really help me with things like Bullet Punch Sizzle. Persimmon is just going to be here to either be a breaker or an offensive pivot. And let's not sleep on Defiant either, which could in, uh, really punish, intimidate, defog and sticky ways. Moving into our last three picks, I need to look for Terra Captains. So as I mentioned, you need to have a minimum of two, and that's moving your 27 point budget. 
I'm thinking with my budget, as I haven't touched it yet, I'm probably going to make my next three Pokemon Terra Captains. So I want Pokemon that are going to meet the lower tier requirements, but also give me decent uh, Terra possibilities. Now I think my next pick, uh, the first of these last three, is an absolute steal. Uh, for our first Terra Captain, I chose Miss Magius. Now it's in the D tier, which means, no hang on, it's in tier 2 for the Terra Mons. This means I can have two Terra Typings, but we'll get to that in a minute. Offensively, Ghost Types are difficult to swap into at the best of times, but pair that with the option to Terra Fairy, opponents are going to have a hard time trying to deal with this using their typical checks. Not only does Miss Magius provide us with a solid way to lure and break Dark Types, he gives me a normal fighting type immunity and extra immunity to ground. That's 4 now. With base 105 speed, it gives me a nice speed tier, so things like Gengar and Iron Moth are forced to run timid against me. This Magius is another Pokemon with a surprising amount of coverage. Pair it with Nasty Plot, and I can see this thing be a decent breaker for such a good value. Just to add to that, the other Terra typing I have gone for on this Magius is Ghost. Now we've talked about an offensive Terra option, and we're now going to talk about a defensive Terra Captain, Vile Blue. This thing was in D tier, it gets free Terra types. And because of that, I've decided to give it Steel, Fairy, and Water which are all really fantastic choices, as they cover Vileplume's usual weakness and Fire, Psychic and Flying. Strength Sap and Leech Seed are two of the most obnoxious moves in the game, and thankfully for us, Vileplume gets both. I feel like I'm going to be annoying a lot of coaches this season, considering I have this, Gliscor, and free Thunder Wave users. You can tell Ellie wrote this now. Most importantly though, Vileplume is here to absorb T-Spikes and check bulky waters. And if I'm feeling really fruity, yes, Ellie used the word fruity, I can bring Manual Sunny Day and abuse Chlorophyll, since it is a special attack stat. Sorry, a special attack stat is very usable. Lastly, we're on to our last pick, and what's a draft without a fast electric type? For our final Terra Captain, I want to up Striker. This is a Pokemon I've wanted to use for a while, and I'm glad I've got to finally draft it. All three of its abilities are incredibly useful, and it gives me two immunities thanks to Motor Drive, being immune to electric, and Sap Sipper, being immune to grass. For the Terra types, I decided to pick Electric for Double Stab, Water for Ground types, and Fire to deal with any bulky Grass or Steel types. I think this one gets overlooked a lot, and I'm hoping this season I can do at least a little bit of work with it. Plus, Eject Pack Overheat sounds fun. So that's the draft for Season 3 of the Pokemon Premier League. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next Sunday for Week 1 against Gravy and the Vancouver Titans. The OG versus the BoG? Bogey, and then in brackets Ellie's put gone, and then in further brackets she's put, sorry that was terrible, yes Ellie, it was terrible.